Another big interview. On the 947 Breakfast Club. This is big. Hello? How are you? Devi Carte Blanche. I yeah, they're looking great. for you for a long time. I knew this. In a Carte Blanche exclusive, we travel to New York and spend some time with one of South Africa's greatest exports, Trevor Noah, on the set of The Daily Show. Devi Carte Blanche. Come on, shake my hand. It's not going to be that bad. But you know you've got a problem. In walked Nelson Mandela, and there was this big hush. And then he came to me, and he shook my hand, and he said, aren't you supposed to be in school? There are lots of cars here in the parking lot, but nobody seems interested in talking to us. Here's Devi Sankri, Governor. I just got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Devi Sankri, Governor, in the house! Yeah. Thanks for the invite, guys. We are so glad you're here. We, we are <laughs> such fans. You know, at least once a month, we'll all fangirl about something you did or you said. Tembegila always has the scoop for us. Like, do you know what my girl Debbie did? <laughs> my girl Debbie. <laughs> but yes, guess what? Yeah. It's always been on my bucket list to get on your show. So I had to actually leave carte blanche <laughs> <laughs> to get on your show. What does that say? Oh, we are so sorry, but we're so glad that we, we are the first people that you came to see after such an emotional episode last night yes, right it was. and you know looking at all these highlights and the things that people were saying about you and i was going through twitter you know everyone says like you know your moment uh you know in journalism is when you interviewed nelson mandela do you think that that's your moment as well or when that said you're just like ah oh, it was a great moment but i think this one for me is it no that was my moment really? and that was long before i even joined carte blanche so i've been doing this thing for 27 years it's a long time to be in the media. Carte Blanche is 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. You got there in 2002. But, and you were at Eastern Mosaic and yeah. you were on radio as well. Yeah. Okay, so do you find that the fact that you did music radio and that you did Eastern Mosaic made it easier for you to do interviews like with Trevor Noah and Lionel Richie? Yeah, because you get entertainment. You understand it. You guys, you, you know how it works. Yeah. You know how to make people laugh. But, but you also know how to get the deets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see, it's never just a normal interview, is it? No. <laughs> the deets. <laughs> Have you ever been nervous to ask a question? No. <laughs> really? Yeah, really? Since it, guys, this is a thing that I have like in my DNA. From the time I was little, uh -huh. they said I had a big mouth. Yes. And then when I grew up in that time, children were meant to be seen and not heard. But I would have conversations with the visitors in the lounge. Uh, You're not sitting on the three, two, one mm, sofa. Yeah. You know that one with the doilies at the back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that one. You like if, if they took the plastic off. You yeah, know, lucky. You know how mothers, yeah, like they yeah. want to keep this, the couch to New. be spruce uh. for as long as possible so they don't take the plastic off. You have a pen in your hand. Why? It's a thing, guys. I have to have a book <laughs> open. And, and a pen. She's making notes. I'm I don't making, know what the notes are I about. Know, I don't know why. I'm so I'm nervous like now. <laughs> no, when so she nervous. pulled out the note, because like, are my taxes in order? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the taxes to come onto the show to actually catch one of us something. Like, actually, guys, here's the thing. No, about that Edgar's account. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Conker, private number. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to change my name, my voice so many times. <coughs> she know here, she know here, she know here. <laughs> Devi, you, 90% of the time, you were in heels. Mm. When you left your house and you put in your outfit on and you know mm. you've got this big story, mm. surely you know at a point you're going to have to run or duck or hide. But here you are in your heels. Like, what? Have you not seen me run in these things? Yeah. I'm like lightning. Uh, do, in these things I know because when I was watching all the highlights package people would run and then Debbie's right there behind I'm Running, like but yeah. she's wearing heels one, only once when I was chasing someone did I take my shoes off but like I like my shoes I didn't even want to kick it into the bush I took it out held it in my hand and ran with the shoes chasing yes. <laughs> because you knew maybe you might have to throw them to slow <laughs> them <laughs> like connect their head to slow them down and your kids are, what's, what's it like do, you know are, are the parents of your kids friend like scared of you do they no. what questions are they constantly asking you I think new teachers do tend a little bit to be a bit scared when they meet me for the first time but I've been I mean my, my daughter's 18 my son's 16 they've mm. in a sense grown up at Carte Blanche and, and, and are used to it mm. so it's a new teacher's I think probably ask the other ones what she really like is she going to give me a hard time uh. I'm actually pretty easy have you never received a, a school newsletter read it and went hmm Mm, something fishy is happening here. Look, I need to yeah, I need to ask the right questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the short answer. I do that for a living. Uh, so I, you read stuff and then you things jump out. Uh, yeah. Where were you when you got the call that you're going to be on Cut Lunch? Um, I, I was I was at home in Durban. I lived in Durban then, all mm. those years ago. 
and I'd come up for an interview. Uh, I remember using my husband's Voyager Miles. We'll never forget. <laughs> I came up for the interview. Uh, I, I researched everything. I knew everything 100%. Mm. And then the first question they asked me, you're not going to believe this. What, okay. mm-hmm. what was the first question carte blanche asked me in the interview? They wanted to know what was my star sign. Huh? Okay. That was that's just doing a question. You see, now I see where I get it from. Oh. You ask questions like that and then you don't know where the people are coming from. Oh, cause then the next scale. Yes, because then the next question, they can really ask you anything. Then Whatever you'd prepared, <laughs> it's laid you down. So, confusion. Yeah. So, yeah. what did you say about just that sign? Well, I said Virgo, because I thought maybe the answer's wrong and they don't like Virgos. I don't know. In, uh-huh. in that moment, you're stressed out because I so desperately wanted that job. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was weird. And then you got it. And then I got it. And I think it changed your life, don't you think? Completely. Completely. What, what's the, what's the, the the most glaring way that you know that being on carte blanche for 18 years changed your life? I get better service at restaurants. <gasps> do you? Yeah. Do you? Oh. Yeah. Do you? Do, and when you complain about a meal, I mean, they probably don't ask any questions. They just bring a new new yeah, plate. They just swap it out immediately. <laughs> um, a friend's birthday is coming up Monday. Can you come with us? <laughs> just you know, just be there. Be like she's not our friend. We just brought her here to make sure that everything is. is <laughs> Do people walk up to you and tell you stories and say, you know, you know, there's this, there's something dodgy happening All in my neighborhood. All the time. And how do you know which one you're going to take seriously? I, well, if, if they have details, because I, I had this auntie come up to me the other day and says, yeah, Devi, you've got to do the story on Eskom, eh? I said, yeah. I said, well, what about Eskom? No, oh, there's big dodgy things going in there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what? No, can't you see it's dodgy? Where must I go look now? So I'm not going to be interested in something yeah. like that. When people have details and are prepared to share documents, mm. I mean, think about this. In the last couple of years, if it wasn't for South African whistleblowers, where would we be? Mm. Mm. It's those guys that you take seriously. And is there a story that stands out for you and just still breaks your heart that something like that happened and we as a society, we allowed for something like that to happen? The Eskom prepayment deal, when they prepaid together, uh. and which allowed the Guptas to buy Optimum Mine. Because that was for the first time that we knew for a fact in South Africa that state capture mm. was alive and well. Mm. We mm. didn't even know what that was before. But when you're able to prove that Eskom paid close on to 600 million rand, was it? Mm. Mm. In mm. advance. Mm. And then there was a denial. And then you remember that moment with Matele Coco? Yes, yeah, yes. It was, and it was so obvious. Ooh. Yeah, it was so obvious. Yeah, that man was bold when going into the interview. He was bolder by the end of it. Like, I was just, he was sweating. But do, do you find that, that you know the people who don't like you, you know, in high places purely because of who you are and what you did? Yes, and I don't blame them. Okay. Because yeah. I think we made life quite uncomfortable for a lot of people. Mm. Good. So I'm not expecting to feel any kind of love here. Mm. And I'm, I'm good with that. Another big interview on the 947 Breakfast Club. This is big. Love Debbie's stories. Um, you know, she really got to the bottom of things. She was not scared. Um, when people saw her, they knew, oh, here comes trouble. And <laughs> it was awesome to watch. I loved it. Hi, Debbie. I would just like to wish you all the best for your future. Whatever you're going to do after this, I just wish you all the best. Why would people let you in? This is what I'm, I want to know, right, Debbie? It's like, sometimes it'd be an interview and I'd be like, okay, but if you know you're this guilty, why did you even agree to this interview? Would you guys lie about why you wanted to mm-hmm. talk to them? Mm-hmm. I'm very charming. Oh, yes. Oh. Really yes, charming. Yes, queen. And I think people... And I'm, I'm just saying, I'm genuinely nice, guys. Like, I want the whole country to know I'm a nice lady. Like, I don't walk around fighting with people all the time. But... But, but charming. But try me, try me. Because we're just talking about, you know, your approach in the interviews as well, is that you would see the confidence that people had in them. Mm. And once you, like, take out the facts and then the confidence is dwindling, you know, is, would there be a moment where you tell yourself, I've got them, go in? Yeah. Right. It's instinct. So, I mean, I plan for those interviews. Every night for me is like studying for a matric exam the next day. Mm, you good. can't do it unless you've got it in your head. It's hard work. So, in the, while the interview is going, then that moment where I think you, there's something that happens in somebody's eye. Mm. Ah. They lose the sparkle when they realize... Did you, did you they I mean, lose the sparkle. Did you go on maybe like a course to see when somebody's lying or does this just come naturally to you? Yeah, that's what's scary about me. Eh? This stuff comes naturally. And, and your kids, your kids must <laughs> yeah, be... Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like she's also a mother. As a mother, you just you can see people who are lying. You're just like, yeah, you ate it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you ate the cheese that was meant for the pizzas tomorrow. You ate it. You ate it. So most importantly, how did you tell uh, the folks at Carte Blanche that you oh, know? It was so difficult. This was such an emotional decision, guys. How long did you mull over it? Oh, months. <gasps> I, I really, I, I didn't start 2019 thinking I'm changing jobs and I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. Not on your life. I mean, Carte Blanche is fantastic. I've been so happy there and you keep thinking, why leave if, if you're happy? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I just I made a meeting with my executive pr- producer, Venan Khrabla, and I said, I just said it. <gasps> uh, when you say you did it, you, you just say, I'm leaving or... Um Thank you so much for the time. Walk me through how you... I, I mean, did not even say thank you so much for the time. I just sat there and I said, this is really tough, but I, I've got to do it. Um, it's been 18 years, but I'm uh, resigning. And he and says... I, and then I cried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was weird. Did every time I, I had to say to people, yeah. I cried in every single one of yeah. those interviews. Did, did they refuse to take your resignation? Yes, at some point, yeah. Like, no, be, no. Must be nice, eh? When you tell people resigning and they refuse. With us, I'm resigning. Okay. <laughs> Next. Picking up the phone, phoning security. Please come fetch a box upstairs. And how did you tell your co-host? Um... I had to keep quiet about it because I was quite scared that uh, it would leak out and then mm. people would start rumors about why. You know, everybody wants yeah. a story yeah. about why you left. People don't want to accept that sometimes you leave because it's time and yeah. you need to do something else for yourself. Okay. So I kept very, very quiet about it and then it all just came out in the press release. That's what happened. Wow. Yeah. Oh. I know. And so, what did they say? No, I mean... And then I cried again. You see, then with every phone call, I cried again because mm. the secret thing doesn't work well for mm. me. I don't like that. But there was no other way to do it. Speaking of your co-host, one of them has uh, recorded a message for you. But in true carte blanche style, we've muffled their voice, right? And <laughs> uh, for what, guys? For what? <laughs> because if anyone can hear what they're saying through a muffled voice, it's Devi Sankari Governor. Hey, Dev, it's that long slab of misery. <laughs> Oh, Derek. Is it Derek? Yeah. Derek, yeah. Hey, Dev, it's that long slab of misery. Um, it really seems just a, a year or two ago that you were being chased by that ostrich. And that's when I first remember seeing your sense of humor and uh, quick wit. And since then, you've just been flying high and uh, really doing wonders for the show. And now you're flying the coop. Um we really will miss you big time, but just keep blazing that Devi trail and think of us sometimes on a Sunday night. <laughs> Lots of love. You see, you know, feel like sad. And this is going to, I know this is just going to happen for a very long time. Ne? Yeah, I keep, keep, it, last night was very emotional. I could tell. Um, you know, I mean, finally, because when Carte Blanche's jingle plays for all of us, <laughs> It's, it means the end of the weekend. It's a school bell. It's a school bell. So now finally, you're going to have the same feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about it like that. <laughs> and life moves on. And you know, you move on to the next stage of your life. And there have been lots of guesses. Uh, where are you going, Devi? No comment. Can we guess? Ah, Yena, the lady yeah, who... I've been dying to say no comment <laughs> right. my whole life. Though. My whole life. I'm like the lady who doesn't take yeah. no comment for an answer, yeah. just no comment at us. Yeah. Mm. How's that? This when that? you say, I, I, I'll put that question to you again, Devi. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, no comment. Look, very exciting stuff. Really? Uh, I'm not going to be lost to South African television. <gasps> People think I'm immigrating. I'm not immigrating. Can, can, we, can we guess? Yeah. Um, I want to go first. Are you joining uh, the cast of Seven Delon? How's your Afrikaans? How's your Afrikaans? Ek was the Afrikaans on the VSRS, eh? so I could wow. do that. Easy. Baya goed. Wow. So is that, did I get it? Is that where you're going? Maybe. I think she has been uh, written into the Isidingo script to revive Isidingo as mm. Rajesh's lover. <laughs> <laughs> bring I it, bring think it back. She's bring, she's bringing back Isidingo, guys. Well done, baby. Thank you. Me and Rajesh. Like mm. this. No? Yeah. yeah. No? No? No. CNN? Oh, that's over the seas now. Oh, you said you're not leaving. Not leaving. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Okay. where are we going to find out? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? Yeah, it'll be a couple of days, man. Just hang tight.
You okay. can make it, guys. But you can make the exclusive happen here for us. <laughs> okay, can, can we ask this before we let you go with yes. love? When the news drops, yes. can we get you on the phone? Shop. I'm here. Are yeah. you going to answer awesome. the phone? I'll give you my, I'll give you my word. I'll be here. It, it'll be a private number, but just, yeah. just know that it's us. <laughs> <laughs> just please know that it's us. <laughs> it's a new exciting adventure, guys. That's amazing. And it was time and it, it was the most difficult thing for me to say goodbye. Mm. Um, because it was a familiar place. And, and it's your life. It's, it's your my life. life. It's mm. my entire life. So, but I've always been someone that always wanted to push the boat out. Mm. Right. And it was, um, I'm pushing. Well, I mean, you've never put a foot wrong from Lotus FM, you know, when you used to do that wonderful talk show, to Eastern Mosaic, uh, to Carte Blanche. I, I don't think you can do anything wrong, Devi. And we yeah. look forward to your next step. And thank, thank you so you. much for your time this thank morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We are sad, but we will deal with it. Ladies mm. and gentlemen, that was Devi Sankari Governor.